Hello friends, my name is Vikas. So friends, in this video, we will be discussing some of the most important current affairs of the topic national affairs of December month. This video will be very helpful to you. So do watch the video till the end. So friends, we'll start with our session. But before that, we have something important to tell you about. So friends, we have an app by the name Carriers Clouds, which you can go and download using the Play Store. Once you have downloaded it, you have to log in with your Gmail ID. And once you are logged in, you will be able to toggle between the individual courses. You can see various courses offered by us. In those courses, we provide you PDFs on daily basis, weekly basis, as well as monthly basis. On daily basis, we will be providing you with 20 questions, quizzes daily, along with the 20 questions of that particular day, current affairs. Similarly, the compiled quiz of 50 questions will be provided to you on weekly basis along with the compiled important current affairs of that particular week and same goes for your monthly PDF. These courses are very important. They are highly important as they are prepared by the various teachers that help you to prepare as well as to give you the command over that particular subject. These course you can share, we provide for banking awareness. We provide you with multiple questions, multiple informations regarding that particular exam. Not just that, we provide you with topic wise current affairs also. Topics such as apps and web applications, important days, books and authors, national affairs, international affairs, all right, science and tech, defense, satellites, and anything you need to know about the general awareness and current affairs, we provide you with that matter. So these will be very helpful to you. Go and check out our courses that are provided on the app. If you want to avail the 10% offered by us, you can use the code Vikas10 and you will be getting a straight 10% discount on the purchase that you make. So friends, go hurry up and it is an opportunity for all the experience, experience it's an so friends, it's an opportunity for all the aspirants to go and avail this offer. So friends, let's start. The first topic that we'll be discussing is related to an online dispute resolution policy for speedy access to justice. This was released by Niti Aayog. First thing that you need to remember, who released the online dispute resolution policy for speedy access to justice? It was released by Niti Aayog. Highly important. First thing. Next thing you need to remember that this was headed by whom or who was the chairman second thing that you need to remember he is arjun kumar sikri was the chairman of this online dispute resolution policy for dispute resolution all right so national institute for transforming india that is your niti Ayog, released an online dispute resolution namely designing the future of dispute resolution the odr policy plan for india which is states a futuristic model for speedy access to justice all right so who released it it was released by niti Ayog. and who was the chairman of this committee he was arjun kumar sikri two things that you need to remember this all right it is an online dispute resolution policy for speedy access to justice next next we will be talking about india young water professional program also you need to remember the short form of it it is iywpp that is your india young water professional program it has launched india high commissioner manpreet vora and significant milestone for india and australia partnership i repeat question can be asked this india young water professional program it is a partnership of which two countries it is a partnership of india and australia first thing that you need to remember from this highly important all right then mapreet vora who is an indian high commissioner says that it will be a significant milestone in a relationship building between these two countries that is india and australia and the name of the program is india young water professional program the first edition, it was the first edition of the Young India Water Professional Program that was launched virtually to provide a structured platform for capacity building with strategic and long-term investment to support the water management reforms in India. So it was between India and Australia. Name of the program is IYWPP, that is your India Young Water professional program the questions will be direct that this program was an initiative of which two countries and which was the edition it was the first edition and it was an initiative of australia and india to support water management reforms in india next next we'll be talking about 52nd edition of indian uh, international film festival of india that is also termed you can say iffi all right so the 
फिफ्टी सेकेंड एडिशन ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल फिल्म फेस्टिवल ऑफ इंडिया वॉज हेल्ड एट वॉट लोकेशन फर्स्ट थिंग यू नीड टू नो इट वॉज हेल्ड एट गोवा इट वॉज द फिफ्टी सेकेंड एडिशन सेकेंड थिंग दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर ऑल राइट इट वॉज बिटवीन ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी एट ऑफ नवंबर इन गोवा दैट वी ऑब्जर्व द इंडियन फिल्म फेस्टिवल इंटरनेशनल फिल्म फेस्टिवल ऑफ इंडिया एंड इट वॉज द फिफ्टी सेकेंड एडिशन ऑफ दिस फेस्टिवल ड्यूरिंग दिस कमेंट बिलो ड्यूरिंग दिस फिल्म फेस्टिवल देर वॉज एन अवार्ड स्टार्टेड फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम first time that award was started what was the name of that award can you tell me comment below we have done that multiple times the 52nd edition of the asia's oldest and largest film festival that is your international film festival of india iffi was held in goa from 22 to 28th of november in hybrid mode to showcase the excellence of film art and filmmakers from all over the world while boosting creativity and cultural exchanges let me give you the name of the award here itself the name of the award was satyajit ray satyajit ray award all right it was introduced for the first time remember in the year 2021 next next we'll be talking about an sip the central government has approved a continuation of scheme for investment promotion for the duration of 5 years that is from 2021 to 25 26 remember this sip what is this scheme for investment promotion who started it it was started by the central government and what is the time period of this sip this is 5 year is the time period of this sip starting from 21 22 to 25 26 six. this is the time period remember 5 years is important from this scheme for investment promotion the ministry of commerce and industry has approved a continuation of the scheme for investment promotion for 5 years that is from 21 22 to 25 26 with a financial outlay of 970 crore rupees sip is a centrally sponsored scheme launched on 11th of november 2008 to promote foreign direct investment so why was this sip initiated it was started to attract F uh, fdi in india that is your foreign direct investment that is the investors who are from outside the uh, uh, investors from different countries to invest in india the implementing agency is highly important remember dpiit that is your department for promotion of industry and internal trade is the implementation agency for this sip that is your scheme for investment promotion all right and the ministry that approved it was the commerce and ministry of commerce and industry all right next next we'll be talking about india international trade fair that was held in delhi it was the 40th edition of this interna india international trade fair who inaugurated it piyush goel who is our union minister inaugurated the 40th edition of the india international trade fair and the location is very important where is the trade fair held always it is held in new delhi union minister uh, union commerce and industry minister piyush goel inaugurated the 40th edition of the india international trade fair that is iitf 2021 at pragati maidan in new delhi it was held on 14 to 27th of november 2021 it was organized by india trade promotion organization with atmanirbhar bharat as the theme and to promote further the idea of vocal for local so what was the basically theme of promoting here vocal for local that means people should use the local products as compared to the products that are imported from different countries all right so coming back iitf where it was held it was held at pragati maidan that is in new delhi the theme for or the idea that was promoted here was vocal for local an estimated of 3000 exhibitors from india and abroad have participated in this fair the fair was not held in 2020 due to covid 19 so it was held in 14 to 27th of november 2021 where and that was the 40th edition of this fair and where was it held pragati maidan delhi all right five pillars that were listed here as it were economy export infrastructure demand and diversity then important thing remember here the partner state bihar is the partner state for the 40th india international trade fair and focus states are uttar pradesh and jharkhand also remember bihar has won the gold award at the iitf so partner state as well as the state that won the gold award at the iitf was your bihar two questions from bihar all right important and the focus states were up and jharkhand next nagaland's chief minister nifu rio and ministry of state tourism 
अजय भट्ट इनोग्रेटेड द नाइन्थ इंटरनेशनल टूरिज्म मार्ट फॉर द नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन एट कोहिमा सो द नाइन्थ एडिशन ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल टूरिज्म मार्ट फॉर द नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन वॉज इनोग्रेटेड एट कोहिमा ऑल राइट रिमेंबर दिस नाइन्थ इंटरनेशनल टूरिज्म मार्ट फॉर द नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन एट कोहिमा इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग यू नीड टू रिमेंबर इंटरनेशनल टूरिज्म मार्ट्स आर ऑर्गेनाइज इन द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स ऑन अ रोटेशन बेसिस नागालैंड इज होस्टिंग दिस मार्ट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम सो क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस विच इज द स्टेट दैट इज होस्टिंग फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम द इंटरनेशनल टूरिज्म मार्ट इन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन इट इज योर नागालैंड एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव टू होस्ट दिस और टू ऑर्गेनाइज दिस इंटरनेशनल टूरिज्म मार्ट इज टू हाईलाइट द टूरिज्म पोटेंशियल ऑफ द रीजन इन द डोमेस्टिक एंड इंटरनेशनल मार्केट सो टू अट्रैक्ट टूरिज्म दिस इंटरनेशनल टूरिज्म मार्ट वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज इन द नागालैंड फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एंड दैट टू इन नागालैंड इट वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज इन कोहिमा एंड इट वॉज द नाइन्थ एडिशन ऑफ दिस इंटरनेशनल टूरिज्म मार्ट नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ डाटा दैट यू शुड रिमेंबर दैट इज हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट एन एस ओ नेशनल स्टेटिस्टिक ऑफिस रिलीज अ डाटा ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड इट्स स्टूडेंट नाइन पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट इन जनवरी टू मार्च फॉर द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट मार्क दिस डाटा एन एस ओ रिलीज इट अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रेट एंड द रेट वॉज नाइन पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट दैट मीन्स नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट भारत डायनेमिक्स लिमिटेड एंड इंडियन आर्मी हैज साइंड अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वर्थ फोर हंड्रेड एंड टू सप्लाई आई जी एल ए आई वन एम मिसाइल्स दिस इज द नेम ऑफ द मिसाइल आई जी एल ए वन एम मिसाइल टू सप्लाई दैम अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वर्थ फोर हंड्रेड सेवेंटी वन पॉइंट फोर वन करोड़ रुपीज वॉज साइंड बिटवीन भारत डायनेमिक्स लिमिटेड एंड इंडियन आर्मी मार्क दिस बी डी एल भारत डायनेमिक्स लिमिटेड एंड इंडियन आर्मी दे टूगेदर हैव कॉन्ट्रैक्ट साइंड अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वर्थ दिस करोड़ रुपीज इन न्यू डेली फॉर द रिफर्बिशमेंट ऑफ आई जी एल ए वन एम मिसाइल्स आफ्टर द रिफर्बिशमेंट द मिसाइल विल गेट अ फ्रेश लीज ऑफ टेन ईयर्स ऑल राइट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट दिस आई जी एल ए वन एम मिसाइल देर वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाई सोवियत यूनियन इन नाइनटीन एटी सिक्स इट इज दिस आई जी एल ए वन एम इज एन इम्प्रूव वर्जन ऑफ इगला मैन पोर्टेबल इगला मैन पोर्टेबल मिसाइल सिस्टम ऑल राइट द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ दिस आई जी एल ए इज योर इगला मैन पोर्टेबल मिसाइल सिस्टम ऑल राइट एंड दिस आई जी एल ए वन एम इज एन इम्प्रूव वर्जन ऑफ दिस पोर्टेबल मिसाइल सिस्टम ऑल्सो रिमेंबर दिस इज अ सर्फेस टू एयर मिसाइल क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट इट इज अ शॉर्ट रेंज सर्फेस टू एयर मिसाइल समटाइम्स द क्वेश्चन इज आस्ट इन सच अ वे दैट इज इट इज अ सर्फेस टू सर्फेस मिसाइल एयर टू एयर मिसाइल सर्फेस टू एयर मिसाइल सो इट इज द सर्फेस टू एयर मिसाइल एंड इट इज अ शॉर्ट रेंज मिसाइल नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट स्मार्ट सिटीज मिशन द टाइम लाइन फॉर द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ स्मार्ट सिटीज मिशन हैज बिन एक्सटेंडेड टू जून ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल राइट द गवर्नमेंट हैज एक्सटेंडेड द टाइम लाइन फॉर द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ स्मार्ट सिटीज मिशन टू जून ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री मार्क दिस अर्लियर लेट लुक एट द डाटा अर्लियर द टाइम पीरियड वॉज और द मिशन दिस स्मार्ट सिटीज मिशन वॉज लॉन्च इन द फिजिकल ईयर ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन एंड द टारगेट वॉज ऑफ फाइव ईयर्स दैट इज टिल ईयर ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी बट नाउ दिस स्मार्ट सिटीज मिशन द टाइम लाइन फॉर दिस स्मार्ट सिटीज मिशन हैज बिन एक्सटेंडेड टू द जून ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स हैज एक्सटेंडेड द टाइम लाइन फॉर द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ द स्मार्ट सिटीज मिशन फॉर ऑल हंड्रेड पार्टिसिपेटिंग सिटीज टू जून ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री ड्यू टू कोविड नाइनटीन इंड्यूस्ड स्लो डाउन एंड द अदर फैक्टर्स ऑल राइट सो द earlier it was given 5 years for this mission for the smart cities mission and now it has been extended to june 2023 next next we'll be talking about india and european union has adopted a clean energy and climate partnership work program highly important mark this question can be asked recently india with which organization has adopted a clean energy and climate partnership work program so it was with india along with european union have adopted a clean energy and climate partnership work program the ninth indian european energy panel held that was co-chaired by Rinath Sandhu the secretary of India's Ministry of External Affairs of West and Ms McLean Vostoffer the deputy director general for energy of European Commission they have decided to opt for what they decided to opt for clean energy and climate partnership work program during the meeting both sides agreed on a detailed work program for the year 2123 to implement the 2016 Indian European clean energy and climate partnership 
the energy panel agreed on increased technical cooperation in the area of energy efficiency renewable energy green hydrogen grid integration storage power market design interconnection cold chain and sustainable financing next next we'll be talking about a postage stamp that was released on the 75th years of the company of mahindra group you can see here this was the postage stamp that was released in the memory to mark the 75 years of the company that and the name of the company is mahindra group who released this postage stamp it was released by dev sina chohan as you can see him in the picture dev sina chohan who is the minister of state for communication have released a postage stamp for mahindra group to mark the 75 years of the company all right and you can see here this was the postage stamp next next will be another important data that you need to remember india achieved a target of 40 percent power generation capacity from non-fossil fuel sources highly important this is towards the green energy that means india is shifting towards the green energy and india has achieved a target of 40 percent power generation from non-fossil fuel sources what are the non-fossil fuel sources they can be solar energy that can be geothermal energy wind energy all right these all comes under the non-fossil fuels of energy that means they are the renewable sources of energy and the for non-fossil fossil fuels are the the energy that are generated by burning coal or petrol all right so in accordance with the ministry of new and renewable energy india achieved a target of 40 percent power generation capacity to 156.83 gigawatt from the non-fossil fuel sources in november 2021 now india installed a renewable energy capacity stands at 150.05 gigawatt while the nuclear energy based installed capacity stood at 6.78 giga watts so a total of from this 40 percent that we were talking about 156.83 renewable energy is 150.05 gigawatt and the rest remaining that is 6.78 gigawatt is your nuclear energy based installed energy capacity all right mark this also shifting to the next information indian army received is we did this if you watched our defense video recently then you would have done this question that india has recently released or received the drones from Israel. From Israel, Huron drones were uh, received by Indian Army so that they can increase their surveillance capacity in the Ladakh region. In the Ladakh region, as we know, the tensions are rising between India and China. So to monitor the Chinese activity in the Ladakh sector, these drones will help to do a surveillance of the particular area. So the Indian Army received the advanced Heron drones from Israel to boost Army's surveillance capacities. The drones will be deployed in the Eastern Ladakh sector. The drones were received under the emergency procurement clause to monitor the Chinese activities in the Ladakh sector. So Indian Army received Heron drones from Israel for the deployment in the Ladakh sector to monitor Chinese activities. Next. Next, we'll be talking about India ITU Joint Cyber Drill 2021 held. So a cyber drill was held between India and ITU. What is this ITU? International Telecommunication Union and the Department of Telecommunication DOT operating under Ministry of Communication conducted a joint cyber drill. In other words, the question uh, options can be given to you ITU plus DOT. Now, what is this DOT? DOT comes under your Ministry of Communication. DOT is your Department of Telecommunication. So International Telecommunication union and department of telecommunication union that comes under the ministry of communication has together conducted a joint cyber drill for the year 2021 it was conducted for the critical network infrastructure operators in india this was a four day virtual event that took place from november 30 to december 3rd the cnis what is cni cni is your critical network infrastructure are the systems assets and networks that are essential to ensure the security of the country to so for the uh, developing the cni systems for the security of the country this joint cyber drill was organized between two organizations that were itu international telecommunication union and the department of telecommunication this comes under the ministry of communication all right and it was your joint cyber drill next next we'll be talking about a hornbill festival 
which state ob- uh, observes this hornbill festival it is celebrated in nagaland first thing important mark this this hornbill festival is also called as the festival of festival second thing that you need to remember so it was the 22nd edition that the third thing so hornbill festival observed in nagaland it was the 22nd edition of it and this hornbill festival is also known as the festival of festivals all right the governor of assam and nagaland professor jagdish mukhi inaugurated the program on the 10th day festival all right and remember this no hornbill festival is a 10 day long festival all right where it was observed in the nagaland at naga heritage village that is kisama kohima all right and the governor of nagaland is professor jagdish mukhi who inaugurated this 10 day long festival this festival is also called as festival of festivals next next we'll be talking about swachh technology challenge that was launched to clean and or to create an innovation ecosystem in the waste management so swachh technology challenge that means all the waste man uh, as we know the waste is generated in a huge manner so to tackle that waste so what should we do with that waste in organize to use that waste and develop something this swachh technology challenge was used all right so swachh technology challenge to create innovation ecosystem in waste management swachh technology challenge launched by the ministry of housing and urban affairs swachh bharat mission urban 2.0 during a virtual launch occasion question can be termed as that this swachh technology challenge was a part of which mission it was a part of swachh bharat mission swachh bharat mission urban 2.0 all right it was a flagship program of swachh bharat mission 2.0 the challenge is seeks entrepreneurial skills for india's waste management sector that can be further utilized by the urban local bodies in implementing various components of this uh, swachh bharat mission of urban 2.0 so coming back swachh technology challenge it comes under what it comes under swachh bharat mission urban 2.0 and also remember this was related to what it was related to creating innovation innovative solutions related to your waste management next next we'll be talking about kazuveli wetland that is located in which location that is located in tamil nadu has been declared as the bird sanctuary highly important mark this kazuveli wetland in tamil nadu declared as bird sanctuary all right remember it was the 16th bird sanctuary all right Kajuveli wetland situated in the Villuppuram district of Tamil Nadu has been declared as the 16th bird sanctuary by Supriya Sahu who is an environment and forest secretary at the Ministry of Environment Forest and Climate Change the declaration was made under the sub section 1 of section 18 of the wildlife action wildlife protection act of 1972 this question is also asked many times in your exam that wildlife protection act came in which year this came in 1972 when was your tiger protection act it came in 1973 just a day uh, just an year ahead tiger protection act came all right then remember kazuveli wetland is also referred to as the second largest brackish water lake in south india only after pulikat lake can you tell me where is this pulikat lake location tell me location this is your homework what is the location of pulikat lake tell me kazuveli wetland where is this it is in tamil nadu and it is the second largest brackish water lake of south india and this kazuveli wetland has been declared as the 16th bird sanctuary of tamil nadu next next we'll be talking about waste wise cities this is the name of the report that was recently released by niti ayog along with cse let's look at it On sixth of December, Niti Aayog, along with the Center for Science and Environment, that is your CSE, have together released a report that was titled "Waste Wise Cities: Best Practices in Municipal Solid Waste Management." It is a comprehensive knowledge on India's solid waste management protocols. This was report was released by Niti Aayog's Vice Chairperson, that is Rajiv Kumar, CEO Amitabh Kant, and Special Secretary K Rajeshwar Rao, along with Sunita Narayan, the Director General Center of Center for science and environment so waste wise cities the name of this report best practices in municipal solid waste management released by niti ayog along with center for science and environment mark this highly important this in this report they will be t- telling about how to tackle the waste like there is a renewable waste that can be renewed such as the 
वेजिटेबल पील्स और योर फ्रूट पील्स दैट कैन बी री यूज एज अ मैन्योर और एनी अदर प्रोडक्ट बट दैट कैन बी यूज एल्सो एज अ फॉर्डर ऑल्सो बट देर आर सम वेस्ट मेटेरियल सच एज द प्लास्टिक बॉटल्स और द पॉलीथिन बैग्स दे कैन नॉट बी रिसाइकल्ड ऑल राइट दे यू कैन नॉट री यूज दैम ऑल राइट सो यू हैव टू अवॉइड दैम इफ यू विल कंटिन्यू यूजिंग दैम दे विल क्रिएट अ mass bunk of waste material that cannot be used in coming video you will be looking at an initiative that was started by nhai that using this waste material waste material or you can say using the plastic they will be developing roads all right they will be using this waste material plastic and they will be using them in developing roads and this initiative was started by national high uh, national highway authority of india we'll be looking at it in coming video next next we'll be talking about e sawari india e bus coalition in tie up with cesl first of all remember e sawari this initiative was launched by which organization niti aayog launched e sawari all right the national institute for transforming india that is your niti aayog have launched e sawari india electric bus coalition in partnership with convergence energy service limited that is your cesl and world resource institute of india wri india and with the support from the transformative urban mobility initiative coming back what is the reason of starting it as you also know in delhi recently electric bus was also released for the public transportation the main reason being is that normal your traditional buses they run on diesel or your petrol so diesel and petrol they consume uh, they release high amount of carbon into the atmosphere that pollutes the atmosphere so in order to curb that pollution these electric vehicles or these electric buses were introduced so that they can reduce the number of carbon released into the atmosphere even by a fraction that will help us so niti aayog have launched this e sawari india electric bus coalition in partnership with cesl remember this the objective being to share knowledge of various stakeholders central and state government agencies transit service providers original equipment manufacturers on accelerating the process towards seamless adoption of e bus services in india apart from this you need to remember that niti aayog also launched a dj book that was titled innovations for you focusing healthcare startups all right so innovations for you this book was basically based on the healthcare startups that was released by which organization it was released by niti aayog niti aayog also launched an e sawari india bus electric uh, e sawari india electric bus coalition also all right so electric bus basically was launched by or e sawari was launched by niti aayog and it was in partnership with cesl that is your convergence energy service limited next next we'll be talking about skill report all right you have to tell me among which indian skill report among which state topped this so remember maharashtra has retained the top spot in the most employable talent in 2020 skill report or you can say if we are talking about india skill report 2020 which is the state that topped this india skill report it was topped by maharashtra as per the ninth edition of the india skill report released by vbox remember vbox maharashtra has retained the top position in the list of states with the highest pool of employment talent followed by uttar pradesh and kerala then the theme of this india skill report is rebuilding and reinjuring the future of work now these four points that i marked first thing it was the ninth edition then indian skill report the ninth edition of this indian skill report released by whom it was released by which organization it is released by vbox then which state topped it it was your maharashtra then you need to know the theme that is rebuilding and reinjuring the future of work states with maximum hiring activities such as maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu are the three states that have a higher job demand Pune is the city with the most highly employable resource with 78% of the test takers scoring above 60%. Next, ISRO and OPPO has collaborated to strengthen R&D. R&D is your research and development of NAVIC messaging service. So a new messaging service that is your NAVIC was strengthened and various research and development was done during in this messaging service by whom? two organization you need to remember isro and oppo then before starting this i need to tell you the name of the new chairman of isro this is the important question that can be asked so who is the new chairman of isro 
ही इज एस सोमनाथ जी साइंटिस्ट एस सोमनाथ इज द न्यू चेयरमैन ऑफ इसरो ऑल राइट एंड ही विल बी रिप्लेसिंग के सीवन टू द पोस्ट ऑफ चेयरमैन ऑफ इसरो सो कमिंग बैक एन एग्रीमेंट हैज बिन इंक्ड बिटवीन इंडियन स्पेस रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट इज इसरो एंड चाइनीज स्मार्ट डिवाइस मेकर दैट इज योर ओपो एंड इंडियाज आर्म टू स्ट्रेंथन द रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द नेविक मैसेजिंग सर्विस एंड इंडियन सेटेलाइट नेविगेशन सिस्टम दिस नेविक एंड एक्रोनिम फॉर द नेविगेशन विद इंडियन कॉन्स्टिलेशन एम्स टू प्रोवाइड अ यूजर फ्रेंडली प्लेटफॉर्म वॉट इज इन दिस एग्रीमेंट एज अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस एग्रीमेंट ओपो इंडिया विल सपोर्ट इसरो विद इट्स आर एंड डी कैपेबिलिटीज टू प्रोवाइड अ सीमलेस एक्सपीरियंस टू द यूजर्स ऑफ द नेविक एप्लीकेशन देर विल बी एन एक्सचेंज ऑफ टेक्निकल इंफॉर्मेशन बिटवीन इसरो एंड ओपो सो सिमिलरली एज ओपो विल बी हेल्पिंग इसरो इन द रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट कैपेबिलिटीज सिमिलरली इसरो विल बी हेल्पिंग ओपो विद देयर टेक्नोलॉजी एंड अदर वेरियस रिसर्च ऑप्शन ऑल राइट सो कमिंग बैक दिस नेविक which two organization will be collaborating together to strengthen the research and development of navic messaging service it will be your isro and oppo and who is the new chairman of isro s somnath coming next to next topic uttar pradesh delhi and karnataka in the leading states in the electric vehicle sales as per the data released by the government so which states has topped the list of sale of electric vehicles it were they were your up Delhi and Karnataka. During the winter session of the Parliament, Nitin Gadkari, who is the Union Minister of Road Transport and Highways, informed Rajya Sabha on the state of electric vehicles in India. As per the data released, there were India has a total of eight lakh seventy thousand hundred and forty one registered vehicles, out of which UP has a total holding spot of two lakh fifty five thousand registered electric vehicles, followed by Delhi, Karnataka, Bihar, and Maharashtra. Then remember GST on these electric uh, vehicles. Earlier it was twelve percent, and now it has been reduced to five percent. Similarly, on the EV charging and charging station, earlier it was eighteen percent, and the GST has now been reduced to five percent. Next. next we'll be talking about a saryu nahar national project this saryu nahar national project is where located in which state it is located in uttar pradesh recently prime minister narendra modi visited balrampur in uttar pradesh and inaugurated the saryu nahar national project this is to provide irrigation to many farmers and also to water proper drainage supply or to proper water facilities to many villages in the uttar pradesh basically in the पूर्वांचल रीजन वेर मैनी फार्मर्स विल बी बेनिफिटेड फ्रॉम द वॉटर शॉर्टेज प्रॉब्लम द फोर्टी ईयर लॉन्ग पेंडिंग प्रोजेक्ट सरयू नाहर नेशनल प्रोजेक्ट वॉज इनाग्रेटेड बाई प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी इन बलरामपुर उत्तर प्रदेश ऑन दिसंबर इलेवन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन द आउटले ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट इज ओवर नाइन थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड करोड़ रुपीज आउट ऑफ विच मोर देन फोर थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड करोड़ वॉज प्रोविजन इन द लास्ट फोर ईयर्स दिस विल कैटर टू द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ वाटर शॉर्टेज मेनली इन द ईस्टर्न यूपी एंड पूर्वांचल विद अशॉर्ड वाटर फॉर इरीगेशन टू ओवर फोर्टीन लैख हेक्टेयर्स ऑफ लैंड एंड बेनिफिटेड अबाउट ट्वेंटी नाइन लैख फार्मर्स ऑल राइट नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट मिथिलिया मखना जी आई टैग और दिस मिथिलिया यू कैन से बिहार मखना जी आई टैग वॉज रिसेंटली गिवन टू द दिस मिथिलिया मखना Apart from this Mithila Makhna, you need to remember there are certain geographical indication tags of Bihar. Bihar, they are Madhubani painting, all right, Khatava work, Sujini embroidery work, Sikki grass products, and Bhagalpur silk. These are also and now one more has been added. It is what? It is your Mithila Makhna. Mithila Makhna. These all are the GI tags of Bihar. Next. Next, we'll be talking about Hyderabad wetland that is located in Uttar Pradesh and now which has been declared as the Ramsar site. We have discussed these questions, so I am giving you just one-liners here, all right? Because if you watch our topic-wise video daily, if you watch our weekly video, if you watch my monthly, weekly as well as topic videos, all three videos, then you should know that all, most of around eighty percent of all the topics that we are discussing today have been covered in our. previous video so it is a just a revision for you so that the data or the important data gets stuck in your mind all right so you can remember them whenever the question is asked so hyderpur wetland it is located in uttar pradesh and it has been declared as the ramsar site next 
Maharashtra has topped the list of states with maximum number of beneficiaries to be assisted under the Atam Nirbhar Bharat Rojgar Yojana. If you remember Indian Skill Report, which state topped it? It was your Maharashtra that topped in the Indian Skill Report. Then now Maharashtra has also topped the list of states with the maximum number of beneficiaries under Atam Nirbhar Bharat Rojgar Yojana. What is this Atam Nirbhar Bharat Yojgar Yojana? The central government launched this scheme to incentivize employment generation in the EPFO registered establishments for a period from October 21st to 2022, 31st March 2022. What was this? That both the employer, that means the person who will be employing you and the employee will be getting some amount of money from the government. That is under this scheme, the government is paying both employees and employers a contribution of 24% of wages, that is 12% of wage for each in respect of establishment having 1000 employees and employees contribution of 12% of wages to establishment employees more than 1000 employees. All right. That means during COVID-19, as we all know, everything was stuck and everything was halted because of the pandemic going on. So in order to generate employment, in order to get the economy back on track, this initiative was started by the central government and they stated that both employees as well as the employer will be getting some amount of wage from the government in order to as they are providing the employment to people and the people are doing the work so that the economy can get back onto the track. Next, next we'll be talking about India International Science Festival of the year 2021. Highly important mark this. India International Science Festival. All right, this was inaugurated by whom? Jitendra Singh inaugurated this. This was the seventh edition of the festival and where did this took place? It took place in Panji. Three to four things. First, what is the name of the festival? India International Science Festival. All right, where was this you know, location? It was Panji. And which edition? It was your seventh edition of this India International Science Festival. And who inaugurated it? It was inaugurated by Jitendra Singh. Now comes the theme that you need to remember. Highly important. Theme is celebrating creativity in science. I repeat, theme is celebrating creativity in science was the theme for the India International Science Festival. That was your seventh edition of the festival that took place in Panji. All right. India International Film uh, India International Science Festival, not Film Festival, I got confused. India International Science Festival that took place in Panji and it was a 7th edition and the theme being creating or uh, celebrating creativity in science. I repeat, what was the theme? Celebrating creativity in science was the theme for the India International Science Festival 2020 one that was a 7th edition of it. All right. And who inaugurated it? Dr. Jitendra Singh inaugurated it. तो फ्रेंड्स ये थी हमारी वीडियो अगर आपको आज हमारी वीडियो से कुछ ना कुछ सीखने को मिला है तो जल्दी से जाइए और हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर दें और इस वीडियो को लाइक कर दें और फ्रेंड्स अगर आपको हमारे कंटेंट से रिलेटेड या फिर हमारे कोई ऐप से इशू आ रहा है कोई भी आप आपको प्रॉब्लम है तो आप हमारी जी मेल जो कि है सपोर्ट एट द रेट ऑफ अफेयर्स क्लाउड डॉट कॉम या फिर हमारा नंबर नाइन सिक्स डबल सेवन ट्रिपल थ्री एट सिक्स टू पर कॉन्टैक्ट कर सकते हैं एंड हमारी टीम जल्दी से जल्दी आपके इशू को रिसॉल्व करने में आपकी सहायता करेगी सो टेक केयर